everybody. Welcome to Stamping with Melva. My name is Melva Peters and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in British Columbia, Canada. And you can find me online at stampingwithmelva.com. And today I wanted to show you how to do a water and water coloring technique that I call abstract water coloring. I don't know, I see this a lot, I don't know if there's an actual name for this. But the trick to this one is you're spritzing the paper. Now there's a couple of ways to do it. You can either spritz the stamps with water after you've inked them, or you can spritz your watercolor paper. Um, I actually find I like the effect when I um, get the, the watercolor paper wet and then stamp on it. Um, you may not like this one because if you don't like um, ink that flows with the water and it's not a perfectly stamped image, this may not be a technique for you. But I happen to like kind of this, this messy abstract effect. All right, I'm using the Perfect Pomegranate uh, stamp set, which is a stamp set that you can get um, either when you have a party that is in Canada, $375 during celebration, or you put an order in of that amount. Hopefully you've got some, maybe some friends that will get together and put an order in and help you get to this and earn this stamp set. But you can't buy this stamp set. It's only available um, during celebration with, with a qualifying order. But I love this pomegranate um, stamp. And I've learned that pomegranates grow upside down to what I thought they did. So I've learned some things about pomegranates since I've been playing with this stamp. All right, let me switch over to my desktop and we'll get started. So first of all, this is the this is the card. I actually shared this as part of the International Highlights blog hop today. Um, and so this, it was created using um, this technique that I'm going to show you. I have used um, Garden Green um, and this is some Real Red Designer Series paper and then Garden Green Real Red um, uh, ink. And then I'm using Fluid 100 watercolor paper. It's beautiful watercolor paper, and you really need this paper um, so that it will soak up the water because we're going to get things a little wet here. Now, I've already gone ahead and cut this out from the uh, fourth largest deckled rectangle um, dies. Let me just bring those in. These are great dies. They're, they're rectangles, and they've kind of got this this kind of ragged edge on them. So I've cut this one out of the fourth largest and then this one that's on here in the garden green is the third largest. Okay, so this is the stamp set. It is a distinctive stamp set. Stamp, stamp set, say that fast. Um, you can't actually probably see it, but you've got the pomegranate and the leaves that I'm gonna use, some other leaves, the flower, um, and a cut open pomegranate with the the dots for the inside and then just kind of this background of dots. Just really fun, fun images. Okay, so let's bring in the supplies that I've got. So I've got a piece of garden green that is um, five and a half by eight and a half and we're gonna score it at four and a quarter. And as always, I grab your bone folder and we're going to fold it towards the mountain or the raised line. It just gives you a better crease using your bone folder and uh, it just folds better when you fold towards that raised line. So that's my card base. And then I've got a piece of very vanilla that is cut four inches by five and a quarter. This is the gingham I think it's called Gingham Cottage um, Designer Series Paper. It's in all kinds of different kind of plaids. I'm using this one in real red and I'm using the smaller, the smaller plaid. This is cut two inches by five and a quarter. And we're just going to adhere this on about maybe just under half an inch from the left edge. down. If you need to, mine's got just a titch longer, just take and, and trim it off with your paper snips. And then this piece will adhere onto the front of your card base. I probably should have done this at the end while I'm my, my um, watercolor that I'm going to do is drying, but 
that's okay. We'll get this done first. Okay. Oof, I didn't get that on very straight. Oh. Uh, okay. So let's do some watercoloring. I have already gone ahead and cut. This is the fourth largest of the deckled rectangle squares, uh, rectangles. Um, I've already gone ahead and cut that out. You could just take half a piece of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper and then um, do your stamping and then cut it out. But, but because I just wanted to kind of get things ready, I've got a spritzer and I filled it, filled it full of water. Now I mark mine because I have alcohol in some from when I do alcohol techniques, but just so I know that this has got water in it and not alcohol. So I'm just gonna take, and I'm using my silicone mat just so I don't get my grid paper. So I'm getting this quite wet. Um, I don't know if you can see, you can probably see the water on it. I'm then gonna take, we'll do the, the garden green leaves first. So spritz your watercolor, your watercolor paper, and then take the stamp, ink it up, and then just take and lay this down, let it sit for just a minute, and then pick it up. And I'm gonna try and keep it, keep it flat. And you can see, hopefully, you'll see the kind of the magic happen where the the ink will start to flow um, with the water. The, the wetter your, your paper is, the more it will flow. All right, this is the pomegranate. Now, interesting thing, the pomegranates grow, I always thought this was this kind of crown at the top was the top of the pomegranate, but they actually grow um, opposite to what you think. So this is not the what it grows from the stem. Um, and so, oops, so we're going to take and stamp our pomegranate while they're still wet. If your water, um, if your water paper, watercolor paper dries, you could spritz it a little bit. But I kind of like it a little bit drier. It kind of concentrates in this case, concentrates the color of the the ink. Because um, pomegranates kind of are a, you know, a deep, this is real red. So they are kind of a deep red. All right, I'm just going to let this flow. And I'm going to take my heat tool. My, and I'm just going to... Hold this down with a take your pick tool. So I'm going to just kind of force this to dry a little bit. Now be careful because the, the water will flow. So I'm going to kind of push it back a little bit. But I'm just trying to dry it. You can take a paper towel and, um, and kind of soak up some of the, the, the water if it's, there's too much. Now, the best technique, um, rather than use your heat tool, is to actually let your, your water uh, color paper um, dry itself. Just dry, let it dry naturally, and then um, it's probably best. But we, we are good with this. Now, I had stamped thinking of you on the, um, the last one. I'm going to stamp thank you. Now, this thank you comes from the Treasured Kindness stamp set. So it's just this little thank you. I was looking for a stamp set that had a fairly small um, thank you, small in image. I'm just trying to see if it's, it's picking up ink. Sometimes photopolymer stamps just don't look like they're picking up ink very well, especially when they're new. I haven't used this before. All right, so I've got my thank you um, stamped on there, and I've got my so you can kind of see why I call this abstract because you really never know. Um, so one, one thing I will tell you is don't give up on this because um, sometimes walk away from your, your pieces because you will think, oh my gosh, that's not good. I don't like that. But when you come back, you may find that you really like how it, uh, how it turned out. So we're going to put this onto this garden green um, rectangle. Again, this was the fourth largest that I did the watercolor and the third largest of the deckled of the, the garden green. 
And then we're going to use some dimensionals to pop up this rectangle. Oops. It's quite a large rectangle, so I'm putting a few dimensionals on. I don't like it to sag in the middle. And then we're just going to take and put it even-ish on our card. Now, I've got some linen thread, so I'm just going to take, I'm going to double this up because I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie a bow with these two pieces. I want to kind of double layer bow. So I've got two pieces of linen thread and we're just going to tie a bow with the, the double, the two pieces kind of put together. I don't want a big bow. All right, so there I've got a bow that's got the double, and I'm going to use a glue dot to put this at the top. The top of the stems, like that. And we can trim these. Okay, now the last thing for the front, I have some of these. These are the... Um, Adhesive Bat Seasonal Sequence. They're part of the um, oh, sweet. Uh, sweet Candy Canes. I think about that. Or Sweetest Christmas Sweet, I believe. And they come in Garden Green, Sweet Sorbet, kind of white, iridescent white, and then these gold ones. And I just really like the look of the gold ones on our, with our real red, it just is very rich. So I'm just going to put three of these on like that. Now, the last, second last thing. So I've got a piece of uh, very vanilla that I've cut four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm just going to clean off my stamp. Oh, my, my chamois is very wet. All right. And we're just going to stamp actually not the pomegranate. we're going to stamp the flower so we're going to stamp the flower here in the bottom right corner so this is just um, very vanilla cardstock it isn't the fluid 100 um, if you wanted to use that you could and you could use you know you could do the same technique on the inside if you wanted to but i just uh, decided to stamp just stamp the, the flower on the inside and then the last thing I want to do is I want this to be shimmery so I've got my wink of Stella and I do this last because I find the wink of Stella takes some time to dry so I'm gonna just kind of make sure I've got a fair amount of wink of Stella so I'm just taking my wink of Stella really need to get a new one because I think this one's almost empty. Yep, it is. Grab a new one. All right, here's another one. All right, so let's just make sure we've got some Wink of Stella. So you just squeeze this one. Uh, make sure you try and squeeze it either so you know where it, that drop is going to go if it starts to, if it leaves a drop. All right. Now I'm just taking and really coloring this with Wink of Stella so my pomegranate is going to be shiny or shimmery. Now you're going to get red because it's going to pick up the ink. It seems, I'm not sure what's in the Wink of Stella, but it does seem to pick up um, the ink out of it. So just make sure you clean that off before you go to use it again. All right, so there is my abstract watercoloring technique with this uh, perfect pomegranate stamp. Um, again, you can get, oops, with a qualifying order during celebration. I'm just gonna let that sit and dry because that week of Stella is still uh, wet. And I, uh, I have uh, spoiled a few cards where I try to move that too quickly and I get the, the ink um, all over because it does take some time to dry. All right, everybody. Um, 
The instructions uh, for this card will be under this video, the link to my blog post where you'll have the instructions, the supply list and the measurements. Um, you'll be able to go out there and get it. If you have any questions, just leave a comment under the video or on my blog and I'm happy to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel while you're watching so that you'll be notified when I post videos or when I go live um, and share different projects with you. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me. Happy stamping. Bye.